Good morning. Good morning, Miss Lynn. How are you? I see you there. I'm just sharing this around. So give me a minute. Thank you very much. Okay, I think that's it. I think I got it. Let's switch up. All right. I am good. I am blessed too. I am really sore though. Can I tell you, like I did a lot yesterday. I mean, Lee and I went out for our um, morning walk, which is great, right? We went out, we did that, but it's getting kind of warm down here. And we were went out a little bit later than we like to. Uh, but we got it done, so proud of that. And then, of course, I did that whole, like, cleaning my bathroom yesterday, which was crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, and then, uh, you know, so leaning all over the place, and I still don't have, like, complete, like, I don't know, rotation of my arms, so I have to do more. Hi, Miss Karen, good to see you. And um, <clears throat> And then we went and we cleaned our car. And, uh... That was, of course, you know, wiping and figuring out what I could do with this arm and what I couldn't. Man, I'm just like, this getting old stuff and not healing, you know, the way that you get as quickly as you do. I mean, I broke my arm in November, and I'm really, really grateful for the use I do have, but I still don't have complete mobility. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit crazy. But it's okay, because you know what? It could have been that I didn't have any. So... This is what you're getting this morning. I have a lot to do. I am going out of town to uh, see my family uh, this week. So <clears throat> next Tuesday, y'all, I won't be here. I think it'll be the first Tuesday I have missed since I started this. Uh, so I won't be here because I'll be on my way back home. So I won't be here then. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's get some coffee. Morning, Miss Jaina. Good to see you. And um, hi, Nita. Good morning. So yeah, so the the whole thing of uh, I won't be here. I'll be coming home next Tuesday. I was coming home on uh, Monday and the kids said, no, you know, stay. So we're going to come home on Tuesday. So it'll be great. I'm going to get time with my grandkids. Isn't that wonderful? Grandkids are a blessing. I should have had them first. Um, so today is a lot of getting ready. So um, there's no makeup. You know, there you go. My hair is like all over the place as usual. So not not my norm coming to you, but you're going to have to deal with it, okay? Because this is as good as it gets right now. That's good as it gets. Um, I was really happy. You know, I used Campaign Mailer to get uh, my brochures, and my brochure came in from Campaign Mailer because I always send myself one, too. Uh, and I just, I, I, I can't say it enough. I love the new size of the brochures. Um, these products that are coming out right here, y'all, uh, if you're my customer and you're watching this in my VIP group, I'm going to tell you right now, this, uh, this sugar scrub and this body butter, this is going to be all the rage. I'm telling you, it's going to be all the rage. Uh, love it. Saw it in New York. <clears throat> Some, it smells good. It feels good. Uh, so, so yeah, so I'm just going to say that at the beginning. Hi, Quentin. How are you, dear? Good to see you. Um, so if you're my customer and you need a brochure or you'd like to see one, I can send you either the digital if you uh, PM me and let me know, or I can get, I can get a paper copy coming to you. Some of you, if you normally get one, it just may not be there yet. Okay. So if you normally get one, know it's on its way, but take a look-see because we are definitely, um, we are definitely bringing some good things to the world with these products. Let me get this put back where it goes, guys. Sorry. 
I am like not all together. Hello, I'm way close to my microphone here. Yes, there we go. Okay, so I wanted to, uh, I <laughs> love you big too, my friend. That's so who else is here? Look, if you're here, say hello. Hi, Eileen. I just saw Eileen there. I'm kind of scrolling back. Um, uh, say hello. Look, we on Tuesday mornings, this is what we do. Uh, <clears throat> we I share a little Jesus with you, or perspective of, you know what? Sometimes life does this or that, and sometimes you don't understand it. And sometimes you come to realize you need a little bit more than just depending on yourself. And sometimes you have to depend on Jesus, and if you're like me, you need to depend on him a lot, because I certainly, certainly, certainly could not handle this life and all it throws at me in business and in life without him. Um, hello, Miss Tiffany. Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, I can't wait till you make it back this way for sure. So I thought this morning, look, if you have any prayer requests, feel free to put them in here. If you don't want to put them in there and you're not comfortable with that, then feel free to... Um, send them to me in a PM or just maybe put an unspoken request. Lee and I do make sure that we grab all of the prayer requests. I know we still, if, for people who know and things that we we can put out there, continue to pray uh, for Tiffany, Tiffany's daughter, who is still healing from her surgery. Uh, she's got a couple of months before she heads off to college. And we are we are just uh, already thanking God for getting her where she needs to be to get back on that volleyball court and to uh, show that college exactly what she's made of. Hi, Miss Kathy. Good to see you. Hello, Debbie. Um, asking everybody to keep, uh, keep Lee's dad in your prayers. There's a few struggles going on there again. So if you could do that, that would be wonderful. Uh, and Miss Sue Ann, who, who last week had said, please keep Lance and Robert still in your prayers. So with whatever's going on there, you know, if you think about it, if you're somebody who likes to, you know, pray for other people and you know what, you talk to God on a daily basis like I do, like I talk to him so much, I think he's getting ready to put me in the corner because that's all I do is talk to him. I got to tell you, I did think today though. I didn't know again what I was going to talk about because I told you we were going to step away from the chosen for a little bit. And um, hi, Steph. Love you too, my friend. Thanks for joining. Um, and so I've really been asking, asking God, you know, show me, show me, show me what you want me to share. Show me what people need. That's been a big thing for me. Show me how I can be of use and get the message across that you want, you want sent across. And um, I believe that it kind of was right on, right on time. Uh, I was uh, listening to Pastor Mike's service. Um, pray for my upcoming PET scan. Miss Kathy, we certainly will. I'm putting that on the list right now. Uh, PET scan. Miss Kathy. All right, we got that down, Miss Kathy. So for sure, we will pray for that. Hi, Elizabeth. Good to see you, girl. Um, so I was listening to the message, um, and and Pastor Mike was really talking about failures. You know, and, and do you ever beat yourself up for your failures? I I am so bad about that. I won't do something. Something doesn't turn out the way I want it to be. Something I thought would be great. Something that I just fall down on the job on. And how about the fact that sometimes we're just not good people? Sometimes. We just aren't. We're just not. And, um, and failure is... Uh, failure will stop you in your tracks. Does that make sense? It will stop you. It will stop you from going forward if you let it. It will stop you from <clears throat> so many things in life and in business if you let it. And I have to tell you that, you know what? <clears throat> people who don't want to see you succeed, people who don't want to see you be better, they thrive on that. They thrive. Um, and the message really hit home. And here I was this morning praying and saying, you know, God, I'm not really sure what you want me, what you want me to talk about. And uh, Pastor Dave, who is also one of the pastors 
at the church sent his email and it says the right way to view your failures and um you know what he wrote was just he's right he says i'm still chewing on sunday's message and i thought man 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 i i have been to the whole failures thing um, and he says, I guess it's because I'm allergic to failure. This is an email that he sends out to people. Um, but he says, he realizes he's been thinking about his failures all wrong. This is what Pastor Mike said. And I thought this was absolutely spot on. And boy, what a different way for me to look at things when I don't get it right. Because newsflash, I'm never going to get it all right. And you're never going to get it all right either. We are human. We are sinful people. It's going to happen. You can try to be as perfect as you want to. Good luck with that. Quit striving for per perfection and realize there is forgiveness out there for you and you can get up and you can do better. But this is what Pastor Mike said. <clears throat> Your failures weaken you, but they don't define you. Your failures pain you, but they don't define you. Your failures haunt you, but they don't define you. Your God will use you and he defines you because it creates a legacy of his strength. Hear that again. God will use you and he defines you. God defines you and who you are because it creates a legacy of his strength. Do you realize that if you let God embrace every failure that you've had, if you let God embrace everything that you've done wrong, if you realize that when you've, you've done something wrong in your marriage, you've done something wrong in your business, you have done something wrong um, maybe where your kids are concerned, where your job's concerned, or how about just in life? Maybe you just feel like, man, I just can't get it right. You do realize that when you give that stuff to God, that he can absolutely take that and he can use that. The reason I know that is because my life in almost 60 years has been full of a whole lot of failures. And I don't mean just in the past. I mean, I, I don't get it right even now. And if you let it, if you let the devil do what he wants to do, which is to keep you down about what you're not getting right, keep you down for not, not reaching the goal that you set before, before yourself. If you do that, if you do that, if you let him, that's exactly where he wants to keep you. But God says, let it go. Give it to me. Go forth. Do better. Because when you get back up, and you let God use the failures in your life. He can not only make you stronger in your life. But he can, he can also make that an example for other people. You know, it's, it's really great when you're at the top of your game and everything. Think about it. Think about them. Yes, yeah, Stephanie, you're right. Turn them into life lessons for sure. Um... When you're at the top of your game and everything's going okay, isn't that just easy? Isn't that just easy? Like just, just to be there. That's right. Everything's good. Business is good. We're on the top 100 list. Kids are good. Their grades are good. Husband's job is good. Everything's good. Everything's wonderful. And boy, you're just, life is so sweet. And then you know what? Here comes here comes the devil. Here comes life, you know. Here comes, oh my goodness, somebody is suddenly sick and they die. Hey, Miss Rosemary, how are you? Hi, Lisa, thanks for joining. How about, how about you thought your kid was doing so good and you found out he's been skipping school? Hmm. How about you found out that you know, that your husband, they're, they're getting ready to downgrade and he loses his job because he just happened to be low man on to totem pole. How about the fact that, you know, your, you know, your business didn't produce what you wanted it to produce or, or maybe there's something you wanted to do 
and it didn't happen. And it's really, really easy just to say, well, this is a failure. I, I just can't, I can't seem to get it right. You'll have people who will tell you, well, you know, if you were there in your kid's life more, if you didn't work so much, maybe your kids would be on a better track. You know, I've had that happen to me so many times in my life. My kids are um, going to be uh, 30 and 37 this year. And can I, can I just honestly tell you this? I've had so many people judge me in my life for different things in my family as if I wasn't judging myself enough, right? As if that wasn't happening enough that I was doing it. And then it hit me about 10 years later, wait until you have kids or wait until your kids get older and wait until you have to experience life with them and you feel like you're doing everything you can and it doesn't save them from doing things wrong it doesn't save them from failure it doesn't save them from hurt it doesn't you are never going to be perfect you are not perfect it's never going to happen and when we keep striving for that perfection instead of just letting God use us where we are Wow. Good morning, Miss Donna. Um, let God use you where you're all. You know, again, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all those things, right? And love people. Love people. It's what we have to do. We have to, we have to love people. We have to realize that when things happen and we're disappointed or maybe we didn't we didn't get the job or maybe we didn't get the promotion or maybe that relationship didn't work out or maybe oops my kids aren't perfect that sometimes that path goes a certain way and you're you're not supposed to know yet why it did god doesn't ask us to play the blame game he doesn't. He says, give it to me and let me use it. Let me use it. Um, let me look here real quick. Uh, Lisa says, "About how about when you were about to move across state for a job only to find out they completely changed their offer? Well, Lisa, I love your attitude already. Still showing up to life and moving forward. Absolutely. It sounds like to me that you found something in the nick of time, Lisa. And I guarantee you God probably has something better for you for sure. Good morning, Miss Lori. Good to see you. Hey, Rebecca. Um, they say you're too involved and are able. And you, you can't, you know what? Kids don't come with a rule book, Rebecca. I don't have to tell you that. You've been a mom for a long time. But it's really easy when you're going through the mom and dad parent thing and because they don't come with a rule book and even if they did, you would need a rule book for each kid because Earl and Anthony are not the same. They don't handle things the same. They don't look at things the same. They're not in the same life situations. But the point is you do the best you can for sure. For sure, you do the absolute best you can. The worst thing you can do is anything you feel like you failed at is letting that define you. Stop believing that when you get it wrong, that's who you are. No, that's what happened. That's not who you are. God's got something bigger for you, but you keep letting the failures just define you. You keep letting what goes wrong in life tell you who you are and who you're going to be and God has a plan for you but are you hindering it are you are you going to just give it over to him and say man God I really messed up on this or God I'm disappointed about this or God I'm really hurt about this you do realize it's okay to tell him I'm really pissed about this I don't like this I, I'm unhappy about this this makes me cry this makes me sad I don't understand it what you need to understand is we are his children and you don't have to understand it but what you need to be doing is to quit looking at the failure that is in front of you and keep your eyes in front of you 
in front of you for what could be coming on the path that you're on now. Now. Because maybe you don't know, but being on that, that path, that road may not be the best for you. Let me ask you, have you ever, have you ever been in this situation? Cause I, I swear I have been here numerous times. You're going somewhere, you know how to get there. You've been there a hundred times, you know, the quickest way, the easiest way, the way with least lights, the way where there's no cops that are going to be hiding, you know, you know, the way, right? And then something happens and you end up not going that way. Oh, you're just like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this has happened. I'm going to be 10 minutes later than I want to be, right? And then, or, or how about this? You forget something and you have to run back home, right? I'm like, oh no, I can't do this without my glasses. I've got to get my glasses. Or for me as an Avon rep, do you know I've actually run out of the house without the Avon order? Come on, Lee, we got to go deliver this order. Told the lady I'd be there in 20 minutes. And then I forget the order, but I remember it five minutes down the road. And then I have to turn around and I have to go back and get the order. Right? Right? You know what I'm saying? But think about this. Have you ever done that, gone back, and then come back down the same way? Or you hear about an accident on the route. You hear that something happened 15 minutes before that. Or when you come down and you see an accident, do you ever say to yourself, wow, if, if I hadn't had to turn back for that order, man, I... I that could have been me. I could have been in the midst of all that. Freaks you out, doesn't it? I don't know if it's happened to you, but it's happened to me and it freaked me out. Like immediately I was doing this. Lord, thank you. I know I just complained about my horrible memory and the fact that I didn't remember that. But if this is what I was supposed to miss, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You don't know. Instead, you're too busy worrying about what you didn't remember or what you didn't do. Gwenda, we certainly will be praying for your husband. Absolutely. Husband Jim. Let me write this down real quick, people. Give me just a minute. Gwenda's hubby. God's got that, Gwenda. You know that, right? You know that. You know why? Gwenda, you know I've been there. You know I've been there. Divine intervention. Find a mass on my kidney. Should have never been found. Wasn't experiencing any symptoms. Fatty mass, which I still have, let me tell you. Just saying. Still have to remind me every day what God saved me from. Took that. Took a little piece of my kidney. Go back in July for another check. I don't know what it's going to show, but I know it's all in God's hands. And so far, I have been clear. You do realize that there isn't anything God doesn't have. Failures can, they, you, you know, you can root in your failures. They're like weeds. I mean, they will grab hold. They will grab hold, failures will be. Failures in your eyes. Sometimes we need to talk about the fact that there's got to be something more. And do you know why? You're still here. You're still here. God was done with you, believe me. If he was done with you, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be breathing. If there wasn't purpose for you, you wouldn't be breathing. Let me be and quit quit letting other people direct your path who have no say in your path. They don't they don't finance your bills. No, they don't. They don't. They don't pay your rent. No, they don't. They don't come in and help you with your kids when your kids are going bad, right? Nope, they don't. But the one person who is there all the time in scripture and prayer is God. And as long as you are communicating with him and you quit looking for the magic genie, you will be able to learn what you're going through. It doesn't mean you're going to get it all right, but you're going to learn. 
You're going to learn what you need to do. Look, some people have given me some awesome advice and you know what? I've taken that advice and I've used it, but let's be honest. That's all it is. It's advice. doesn't mean that's where you're supposed to go in your life. That doesn't mean that because they think they know, um, because they think they know where your life should be, that that's the right path. See, everybody has an opinion about everybody else's life, but their own stuff that's going on in their life. It's so much easier for them to pay attention to that because they don't want to pay attention to their own backyard. That's what happens. I just, uh, <clears throat> truth of the matter is, most everybody in my family probably would have never picked Lee for me if they were being completely honest, if they were. Some of them probably don't like him now. That's okay. They don't have to. He's not their husband. But when I, you know, when I look at, well, why is that? Well, my husband's very outspoken. He is. He doesn't believe in sweeping stuff under the carpet. He doesn't. My family is known for it. Um, they can be very dysfunctional that they just do not, they don't look at things head on. And people think they know where your life should be, how you should live, what, 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 who you should live with. Um, but the only person that really matters is, you know what? It's what God thinks and how God's using it. And I have to tell you, I know where I came from. I didn't want to be there. I know what I was living in, in a godless marriage, in my first marriage. Doesn't mean he's a bad man, but he definitely had no direction as far as us growing as a couple and getting stronger in our faith. That wasn't happening. And if you're not trying to grow your faith, what happens is when bad things do come and you realize that you're both, you're both very human and you both can crumble very easily, you better have something that's bigger than you to hold on to, somebody bigger than you that can help support you, somebody bigger than you that can use whatever the failure is, whatever the problem is, whatever the devastation is, and know that as out of control as things seem, he has it all in the palm of his hands. It doesn't mean he's bought it. But one thing's for sure, when things happen, he can use it. Failures. Man, don't get caught up in them. I, I have done it. I have done it numerous times. Beating myself up saying this business isn't for me or maybe marriage isn't for me or being a mom isn't for me i look at our suicide rate especially among our young people and i don't just mean people in their 20s or 30s i mean in our kids who are 11 12 13 14 and i look at the fact that what does it take for you to believe that life is so bad, that you are so unloved, that it is worth ending your life. Do you know where my gratefulness is? I've never thought it would be better just to end my life. That was grounded in me somewhere. No matter what my mom and dad did that were wrong, that was grounded in me somewhere. I have a passion for people. I have a passion for people to know God. I have a passion to let people know they are very important. I have a passion to right wrongs. And on that one, I've had to kind of let go. Because God's calling for me is not to right everybody's wrongs. It's not for me to fix everything. And when I see that something is broken and there are mistruths and there are um, 
there are ways that maybe I could step in. It doesn't matter if I could step in. My first question needs to be, does God want me to step in? Because he didn't put me here to save everybody. That's not, that's not my job. That's his job. But then I realized it's not him just going out saying, I'm going to scoop you up and save you. You have to want to be saved. You have to want him in your life. I say this all the time. People say, I'm not real sure if I believe in God. You know, Molly, I, I believe that there is a higher being. You know, I mean, I believe there's something that's probably directing it all. And then those same people, when somebody is in a car accident, when somebody develops cancer, when there's problems with their kids and they find out they're on drugs, and those same people, they come on Facebook and they're like, please, can you all pray? Well, tell me, young man, young woman, who are you praying to? Because in the midst when the things get hard and the trials get hard, I see you saying, please pray. And the only one I know to pray for is the one true living God. The one who is there when everybody else turns a back. The one who is there when no doctor has the answer. When no counselor has the answer. But I make it through to another day and dag on. Dag on, y'all. I wake up and I say, So you're not done with me, huh? It's a really bad day yesterday. God, he ain't done with me, huh? And he says, No, Molly, I'm not done with you. But that thing you just went through, go ahead and you share it. You let people know how your thought process changed the next day. And you share that, Molly, and you share that because somebody's not going to feel that one day and they're going to read or they're going to listen to what you've experienced, Molly, and they're going to say, yes, I'm worth it. I am worth it to want to get back up and do better than my failures. The other thing that I read this morning, I think one of the things that really stops people on the trap, and again, I only talk about what I know about, <clears throat> and that is loss. Loss of a loved one. Man, it can be a sister, it can be a mom, it can be a best friend, it can be a dad, it can be... It can be somebody that nobody would understand the relationship, but one minute they're here and one minute they're gone and the grief digs deep. The guilt sometimes digs deep. Well, I wish I had been there more. I wish that I had done this. I wish that, I wish that. But in the meantime of the wishing and the guilt and the grief, that comes with losing people. I have watched losing people stop people permanently in their tracks. I need you to know something. That's exactly what the devil wants. The devil wants to give you something. Hey, Jen, how are you, sweet sister? The devil wants to give you something for sure, that is going to stop you. And, and, and it's up to us to realize that God's just not going to reach down and go, oh, no, 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 that's not going to stop them now. Uh, uh No, what God is waiting for you is for you to get back up from your grief in time and say, I'm not done because I can use what just happened to me to help somebody else. Let me, let me read you something here. <clears throat> the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And I'm going to tell you something. Losing somebody that you love, that you can't imagine ever being 
not in their lives or them not being in yours. There is nothing. Not being able to pick up the phone and call them. Man, it, it will rip your spirit completely out of you. Listen, losing someone you love can cut into your heart so viciously. It forever redefines who you are and how you think. And it's what I think some people would call a really deep grief. I believe that I had a really deep grief when my mom died. When my brother Mike died, I had a deep grief, but I had a feeling of failure. Mm. Now think about this. Deep grief and failure. It's like you're, you're grieving two major things. Well, Molly, I don't understand. Why were you, why were you feeling like a failure? Because I couldn't save him. I couldn't save him from himself. I couldn't make him want to do better. I couldn't make him want to fight. I was his sister. I was the one there taking care of him. I should have been able to save him and I failed. Oh, I was angry. I was sad. I wanted to blame everybody around me. And when my mom was sick with, with cancer, which was so many years ago, guys, I was 16, right? <clears throat> but they picked me to take care of my mom. There was no hospice back then. There was none of that. So here I am, a senior, a senior in high school, who basically came out of school from the months that my mom was alive and I took care of my mom. I gave my mom her pain shots. I gave my mom the shots of Laetrile, which at the time was an experimental drug. I was the one who gave my mom the coffee enemas that she was trying. I was the one who was bathing her. I was the one. And I was just like on automatic mode. Mom wanted me to do it. I'm going to do it. Dad wanted me to do it. I'm going to do it. And maybe if I did this enough, maybe it will heal her. Maybe if I show up enough, maybe if I do what I'm supposed to do, it will heal her. And it's 16 years old. And I finally said to my dad, I can't do this anymore. I can't take care of mom anymore. Mom keeps asking me for more pain medicine. And I'm her daughter, dad, and I'm going to give it to her. I'm going to give it to her, dad, and I'm going to be responsible for her not being here anymore. I can't do this. And what I wish that my dad had done was put his arms around me and said, I understand, and boy, Molly, you, you shouldn't, you really shouldn't have had to deal with this, but he didn't. He expressed his disappointment in me because I wasn't willing to stay the course so that my mom could stay home and because she was only comfortable with me taking care of her. So when my mom was going to the hospital and she turned around as she was going out the door and she was just looking almost like she was trying to memorize what this this little house this beautiful house that she loved never wanted anything big didn't matter how much money dad had mom this is where her heart was and i knew even at 16 she knew at that moment that she was never coming back home but in my head, the reason she felt that way was because of me. I had failed. I had failed. Mom died a couple of weeks later in the hospital. And I wasn't there. 
And do you know what kept me from going there? Now, this is what I told everybody. My brother Jason was only four or five years old. And I was like, no, 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 I'm going to stay. I'll stay here. I'll take care of Jason. Do you know what stopped me? What stopped me from seeing my mom in the hospital before she died was the fact that I let that feeling of failure rob me of being there when my mom died. You think back to these things in your life. And for years I thought, I didn't even care really if God wanted to use that. I remember going back to school in my senior year and I was a different person because of that experience. <clears throat> I remember them crowning me homecoming queen and I didn't care because my mom wasn't there to watch it. I remember graduating and not really caring because my mom wasn't there to watch it because maybe I failed because I should have done what everybody else expected me to do. Grief and failure together could end anything good that could come out of things if you stop living. Let's read on. <clears throat> wow, I don't know why I got off on that. It's called deep grief. It strains against everything you've ever believed. So much so you wonder how the promises that seemed so real on those thin Bible pages yesterday could possibly stand up under the weight of this enormous sadness today. I once stood at the side of a casket too small to accept. Pink roses draped everywhere. And I watched my mom as she lay across the casket, refusing to let go. How could she let go? Part of her heart lay within, so quiet and so still. I stood paralyzed and stunned. Just days ago, we were laughing and doing everything, everyday things, and assuming that all of our lives stretch before us in spans of many, many years, you know, they're going to be there for everything, right? To see me graduate, to see me get homecoming queen, to see me get married, to love all my kids. But no. And then suddenly it just all stopped. In the flurry of funeral plans and memorial services, we all operated on automatic. People were everywhere, soft chatter filled in the gaps that our stunned silence could not and people brought in enough food to feed the whole neighborhood. But eventually, people went back to their own lives. The soft chatter dissipated, the food stopped coming, and we were forced to carry on. Only, we had a deep grief wrapped about us that made our throats feel strangled and our feet stuck in mud. You know that feeling? I remember around that time when I tried to go to a drive through to order some food, but I couldn't. I sat there with the speaker spouting words at me I couldn't process. The cashier kept asking if she could take my order. Yeah, yeah, I had an order. Take away my bloodshot eyes. Take away my desire to hurt the doctors that couldn't save my little sister. Take away my anger towards God. And then take away my guilt for being the one who lived. I'll take all that with no onions and extra ketchup, please. I drove away sobbing. How dare they offer happy meals? No one should be happy today or tomorrow or the next year. This is the reality of deep grief. Even when you love God and believe in his promises, even when you know without a doubt that someday you will see your loved one again, even when you know hope is still there, even when you know he is near, it takes time 
It takes wading through an ocean of tears. It takes finding a possession of your loved one you thought was lost and realizing God did that just to comfort you. For me, my mom had a locket and it said PAL, Patricia Ann Leach, her initials. I didn't even know it existed and I found that. It takes discovering one day that the sun still shines. It takes being caught off guard when you catch yourself smiling only to realize it's okay. It takes prayer. It takes making the decision to stop asking for answers and to start asking for perspective. It takes believing Psalm 34:18 is true even on the days it doesn't feel true. That the Lord is indeed close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. It takes telling people to please not avoid saying her name. You want to hear it over and over and over again. You want the stories. You want to laugh. You want to remember. And as bad as it hurts, you never want to forget. Then one day, you take off the blanket of deep grief. You fold it neatly, and you tuck it away. You no longer hate it or resist it, for underneath it, wondrous things have happened over time. Things that could only have come about when divine hope intersects with a broken world. And finally, you can see years stretching before you once again. You look up, you blow a kiss, wipe a tear, and find it's still possible to dance in the rain. Man. God, thank you for assuring me that your promises hold true, even when life seems to betray me. And you are my strength and my hope. If you've ever lost anybody, how does that not, how does that not hit you? Again, this is from the devotion embraced. <clears throat> I got this. Somebody sent it to me. A dear friend, Kathy, sent this to me when I was diagnosed with the mass. I still have not read all of them, but every now and then something, when I pick this up, when it's my day to read this, something will hit and will hit hard. Deep grief and failure. And if you ever feel that together, you think you can't get out of it, but you can. You have to wake up every day and look for the sunshine. Man, when somebody in your life disappoints you that you thought was there and you're devastated, you're devastated because it's something you never expected. It could be the death of a person, it could be the death of a relationship, it could be the death of what you thought your life was going to look like. But that doesn't mean that there is not something waiting for you that is going to rise up just like Jesus did on the third day. And going to be much better than you ever thought possible. Not that any of those things that are better take the place of what you lost. That's not it. That's not what we're saying. But when you make it through those kinds of things and you put one foot in front of the other and you quit seeing yourself in a sea of quicksand, when you quit seeing yourself as the victim, 
when you quit seeing yourself as somebody who will never get it right, you're a big old failure ball. Maybe I am. Maybe I am a big old failure ball. Maybe there are many people who are in my life, in my family, who could be disappointed in me. Maybe they wish I had taken some different directions. Maybe Jesus wished I had too, but see, Jesus is the one with the answers because he said, no matter what the path, no matter what the failure, no matter what the grief is, Molly, I'm going to take it if you let me, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it for a greater good. I'm going to use it to help other people. I'm going to use it to make you stronger. I'm going to use, you, use it to make you wiser. I'm going to use it because you have allowed me to use it. I'm here to tell you that as much as I miss my mom and as much as I miss my brother, as much as I miss Ray Penn, for many of you who know Ray, we're not even going to get into that, but there are certain people in my life that have had such a massive impact. My Aunt Joyce, you all have those people, you know. Because of those people, because of them, not in spite, in spite of their death, okay? I know they're not here now, but because of them and what they brought into my life, I choose to go forward and be better and lead by example. And they say sometimes, watch what you wish for. When I say, God, please use my story. Because it's so full of failures. It's so full of embarrassments. It's so full of wrong turns, God. I've got so many things that I should have done better, God. And he says, sister, let go. Let me use them. Let me use them, my child. Let me use that grief. Let me use that failure. Because I am going to use your journey to help others know that you can still go on and you can still be better and you can praise me in the midst of it. And you can too. I am no different than the rest of you. The only difference is I'm the person who gets out here and shares all my failures. I'm the one who shares all the missteps in my business all the missteps in my life my failed marriage even in my marriage now that i'm solid in but i still fail i still don't get it right all the time y'all none of us do so if you have failed at something lately or something's not going the way you want it to if you are still in the deep grief of someone you lost. One, I get it. Don't unpack there. Don't unpack there. Know that if you reach out and you ask God to use it, yeah, he will. He can. In his time. In his time. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you that you love us in spite of our failures. God, in, in spite of our sins, in spite of the wrongs we've done, in spite of our history, that all it takes is calling on you, God. God, if there's anybody here who's dealing with deep grief, deep fear, deep failure, God. Let them know that you are there to wrap your arms around them, God, and comfort them and walk with them through it to the other side. Help them, God, to take these blankets of deep grief when it's time and deep failure when it's time and to take it off their body and to fold it up and tuck it away, God. And then realize what they can learn from it and how they can 
help others above all. We thank you, Lord, for these devotionals. We thank you for the people who've showed up live, the people who are showing up on replay. God, we pray over all the prayer requests, Lord, that have been put here. God, we know that you know. You knew before they ever typed it. You know the, the struggles people are having who haven't typed it. God, you know. And we just pray, Lord, that you will see each and every person through the struggles and we praise you for everything that you've done that is great. Sometimes we forget. We get so caught up, Lord, with our struggles that we forget to praise you, that you just got us here to another day. Help us, God, to stand up and be your soldiers. Help us, God, to stand up and to love people, even those who disappoint us, even those who are the hardest to love, those people, God, you did not come to save the righteous. You came to save the sinner. And I think sometimes that we as a church and we as Christians, sometimes, God, I believe that we get so caught up in being with the people who, who think like we do, who believe your word, who know you're coming back again one day. We forget that there are people out there who don't know God and we need to tell them. We need to love them, God. We need to drop them at the feet of Jesus. Thank you, God, for loving me and all my failures. And I know that you know them all by number, just like you know the, the number of hairs on my head. But thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for giving me the strength to go on. Thank you for giving me the encouragement to share and thank you God for always being there amidst the storms in Jesus name amen guys thank you for being here for those of you who 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 show up show up for the replay you show up for the YouTube you show up for this God is moving he is moving I have people who are moving away from me it's so funny it's like, you know, people are like, well, you know, I really like Bali, but you know, she like, she like found this Jesus thing. And, you know, I'm not really sure about that. I mean, I love her anyways, but I'm not, that's okay. That's okay. If you watch me enough, you're going to understand that who I am and who I've become and who I continue to develop into. This is only possible with the life I've led because of Jesus even when I didn't want to admit it. He's got a plan for you through your failure, through your deep grief, and everything that comes with it. Don't turn your back. Ask him to help you through it. Ask him to help you to put those blankets away and move on, my friends. Move on and be better and help others do the same. You all have a great rest of your week, and I will talk to you not next week, but the week after we will be back. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a great day.